Welcome back, everybody. Silas here again today. It is getting pretty late in the day. It's about 6.30 out right now, but I've got a few things I gotta take care of. Tomorrow morning, I have two guys coming. One of them's from out of state, and one's from almost out of state. He's up by the border, but he's coming down to get a truck, and the other guy's actually coming to get a truck, too. They're both coming after trucks. One's an old 69 Chevy, and one's a 65 International. So I've gotta get those out, get those ready to go, lined up, that way they can just back right up to them, pull them up on the trailer. I've also got to get that car off the trailer. That's from a previous video there where I pressure washed it. I got to get it unloaded, get it set up front. That way when the guy comes after it here in a few weeks, it'll be ready to go. Not only that, but I've got that big barn up front that I started cleaning out a month, two months ago, whenever it was that I was going to get stuff set up for an auction that I told you about. And that just didn't happen. Well, they're having another auction this July. And I would absolutely love to put a whole bunch of my stuff in that auction if I can make room in that barn to put it all. That's the key thing is I have to make a place to put it. So tomorrow, I don't have a whole lot going on with anything else. My wife and children are out of town for spring break, so I've actually got an opportunity to maybe possibly get something done where I don't have any other responsibilities and nothing else going on. So we'll kind of see what happens. But here's the truck I got to dig out. Many of you have seen this truck. Many of you asked about buying it, but I actually sold this quite a while back. Guy's coming from Oklahoma to get it. It's a very nice truck, really. It's a good survivor truck. Very, very minimal rust. The only rust in this truck is down here in the rocker panels. There's a little bit of bubble rust. And then inside the truck, the floor has a little bit of bubble rust in it underneath the floor mat. And the worst rust is up there in the headliner. All the way around, it kind of rusted out, mainly on the passenger side. The driver's side isn't nearly as bad. But I think this is a 69 if I remember right. It's a V8 automatic truck and they put AC on it when it was new at the factory, but other than that, it doesn't have hardly any options. It does have a little bit of rust in the tailgate too, because the tailgate sat down for years and all these little pockets filled with water and rusted out. But overall, it's a very, very buildable truck and the guy's looking to do a patina build is the way I understand it anyway. So this will be absolutely perfect for him. I don't know if it runs, it's supposed to run, but like I said, it's been sitting for many years. So I don't know, that's up to him to decide though. I do need to get it dug out and drug out to where he can get to it. I don't know if the tires are going to take air or not. I'm going to charge up my compressor tonight, the battery for it, and see. I kind of doubt it. Like I said, it's been sitting for a long time. Yeah, these tires, they're not holding air. But I'm going to get it at least dug out and turned, get these cars moved, and get it turned to where that guy can back his trailer up in here, and we can load it up on him a little bit easier. I'll show you the International in the morning. I actually thought I had showed it to you guys, but I guess I didn't when I bought it. I sent my buddy Skyler out to an auction to bid on another truck, and that truck went sky high, so he ended up actually seeing that International there. It wasn't on the sale bill, and so he's like, hey, you want me to bid on this one? I said, sure. I told him a price, and he ended up getting it, so he brought it down to me, and about two days later, a guy emailed me, or maybe it was the next day, I don't remember now, and he's like, or he messaged me, I'm sorry. And he says, hey, do you happen to have any International C-Series out of the 60s? 62 to 68, I think. And I said, actually, I do. I just got a pretty nice 65 in. A neat little step side truck. So if you're interested, I'll send you pictures. And I did, and he's interested. So he's bringing a truck and trailer down tomorrow to get it. But this is what's in my truck. I've still got all these parts in here that I need to package and ship out. I'm going to get that done. By the time you see this, they'll be long gone. So if you're the one that bought these parts and you watch my video, I got these parts and some more over there and a few more in here. And you're saying, well, I got these parts already installed on my vehicle. What are you talking about? It's because this video is about a week to two weeks, sometimes even two and a half weeks old. But I've got to get all this wood out of the back of my truck. I've got to take all these converters by storage, put those in there. It makes me really nervous driving around with this many converters in the back of my truck. Because even, even just this few in here now, I don't know what's in here. I think there's like 30 or 35, maybe 40 in here altogether. Uh, I forget what these are worth, but there's probably, probably $10,000 worth here. It just makes me really nervous. <laughs> I've seen people get robbed and shot for a whole lot less. I loaded these up at the yard and I brought them out here because I had to come out here and make a video. And now I've got to get them back to the storage unit and get them put in there. I'm home now, it's about nine o'clock at night and I'm packaging stuff. I got most of it done. I'm working on packaging up this old stoplight now, off that old bus and the taillights. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna wrap it in cardboard. I'll get, I'll get it all wrapped up good to where it looks good. I have a dog, Hazel. She's determined that she's gonna get in the way the entire time I do this. <laughs> Now I'm going to take them and I'll put them in here. I'll take that light and I'll put it down at the bottom. Then I'll put a layer of foam or something soft in there. And then I'll take each tail light and wrap it in cardboard individually as well. And kind of put those in here as well. Now we can get all three pieces in here. They'll all be wrapped in cardboard and wrapped in foam. Should be plenty safe to make it to them. And there we go. I got everything packaged up. I got a video edited. I'm working on the thumbnail now. It's about, uh, what time is it? It's 
10.45. So yeah, it's getting pretty late, but I'm gonna finish this thumbnail, get that, make sure that's scheduled, ready to come out and all that. And of course, now that I'm recording, the dogs wanna wrestle and play. Yes, yes, that's right. Stand on top of the other dog. Yeah, make her bark, make her growl while I'm trying to record every time. But anyway, guys, I will see you in the morning. And good morning. We are back out here again today. It's time to get busy. First guy is going to be here in about an hour, hour and a half to get that Chevy. And the other guy will probably be here about an hour, maybe 45 minutes after that to get this International back here behind me. I told you I'd show you that one, so I'll take you over there and show it to you now. This one's a very cool truck. I really like it. This fender here is kind of boogered up. But you know, there's no rust in this thing other than the hood. The hood's rusted out. But it's got the tailgate on it still. The, the floors are still solid. The rear fenders are good. The whole bed's good, really. It's got a really nice bed on it. And this door and this fender are messed up a little bit, but they're not rusted out. And as you can see, it's got a bunch of just junk inside it. So I'm so sure it's got some rust in here, but it doesn't look that bad, really. Even like the, the door pocket down there at the bottom is solid. It's got some rat nest in it, but you know, it's still, I mean, it's been sitting out on a farm forever. It's been sitting since 1979. Needs a windshield. Yeah, it's got the old six cylinder in it still. Don't know if it runs, I kind of doubt it. After been sitting that many years and the engine's just absolutely caked. I mean, caked in dirt. I'll pop the hood and show it to you. Look at that. It is caked on there. This thing must have leaked oil and they must have drove it down dirt roads because <laughs> it's pretty bad. But you know, it might still run. These old six cylinder international engines are pretty tough. They weren't speed demons by any means, but you know, they'd usually run. But I'm going to get it set out to where he can back his trailer up to it, winch it on his trailer. I'm going to get that car off of my trailer. That way my trailer is ready to go in case I buy something else. And then I'm going to dig that Chevy out. I don't know what order I'm going to do it in, but I'll figure that out as I go. You know, shockingly, this truck isn't very heavy. I mean, it's, it's still fairly heavy. It's an old truck, but, you know, compared to a lot of trucks, like that Ford right there, I guarantee you that Ford weighs more than this truck does. A lot of internationals are really heavy, but this year must not have been that heavy. I put it right there next to my Jeep. That way he can pull his trailer in, back right up to it, get it loaded, no problem. I sure do wish that was a Dodge or something that I liked, because I would have kept that one in a heartbeat. That's just such a good looking truck. Next up, I want to grab this old Thunderbird and that Toyota, move those out of the way. That Toyota, I probably should have just sent that one straight to the shredder. Huh? I'm really kind of regretting bringing that one out here. I'll have to load it back up later and smash the roof in and take it on down there. The Thunderbird, probably the same thing, but like I said, I want to chop the nose off of it because I've always liked Thunderbirds and that'd be a really cool piece to stick back there by my junkyard cabin. Speaking of which, I know some of you have been asking about that. When am I going to get back to that? The problem is, is I put a stove in there and I actually recorded putting the stove in and all that. And it was a month ago, a month and a half ago, something like that. But nobody sells five inch double wall pipe around here. And I even went to Wichita, which is the biggest city in Kansas, and they didn't, nobody there had five inch double wall pipe in stock. So. I'm going to have to order it online. The company I bought the stove from is out of stock of their 5 inch double wall pipe. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, I found another set online, but man, that stuff's expensive. I need a, a piece that's about, uh, I think, uh, three or four, no, four feet long. And a four feet piece of that stuff is like $250 or $300. And I'm like, $300 for this? I just, that's not in my budget. So I just haven't done it yet. I need to order it and put it in there. I actually was going to do a junkyard camping video last night. But it was, it's been pretty cold and windy all week, and so I would have had to have some sort of warmth like a fire. And it was too windy to have a fire outside, and obviously I can't have the stove inside because I don't have anywhere to vent the exhaust. So, so much for that idea. I'll do a junkyard camping video here probably in a couple weeks maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll worry about that another day. Let's get back to digging out this Chevy. Wow, check that out. You see all those little marks on the ground all through here? Those are all deer tracks. There must have been a bunch of deer went through here. That's pretty cool. I just absolutely love it out here. I'm really glad God blessed me with the opportunity to buy this property because it's just so nice. Even even if I didn't have the cars, just having a place where I can go out and go exploring in the woods, out in the field, just, it's absolutely beautiful out here.
I guess I'll go ahead and save this one for now. They are getting pretty rare, and it doesn't weigh that much, so I guess I don't have to crush it. I don't really have time to come out here and load stuff on the trailer and haul it in anyway. I got plenty of stuff in town I need to get out. I'm trying to decide where I want to put it, though. I'm starting to run out of room in this area. I've got a little bit of room out back, but a little bit of room over here, but I don't know. I'm really, really trying to avoid putting cars out in the back field, but I think I'm going to have to go ahead and start doing that probably this spring or later this spring or summer. This in here, I don't quite think... I mean, if he's really good with his trailer, he could circle it up here and get this, but I don't know the guy at all, so I don't know how good he is with the trailer. So, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to put the thing in neutral, and I'm going to pull it out, and I'll probably just go ahead and park it in the middle of the road. I don't need to go through here or nothing like that, so I think that's what I'm going to do is I'll probably circle it around about where the loader's at now, facing straight out. Because of the way the frame is made on the International, I can just pick it up with the, with the loader without hurting anything, but this truck here, if I pick this one up, I'm going to crush the bed in. I'll probably bend the drive shaft. These Chevys aren't quite as bad as the GMCs because these have those trailing arms that go up. But still, just to be safe, I want to make sure I don't do that. GMCs have leaf springs, I believe. And so if you pick them up, the frame kind of swoops up right here and you'll crush the bed. And Dodges are the worst. If you pick a Dodge truck up out of the 60s and your fork is passed about right about here, from here the frame just goes straight up, way up inside there. And you'll crush the, the bed in and the ones that have external gas tanks, you'll crush the gas tank. I mean, you'll tear them up pretty bad. All the way from about 60 up to about 93. If you pick up any of those Dodge trucks in that era, <laughs> all those eras, you'll destroy them. There we go. Now I can finally show you guys inside this car. Now, like I say, it's pretty rough. It's got the cool steering wheel in it. It's got the AC under the dash, the Arctic car. Looks like it has one of the hubcaps here still. There's an old time car seat. That's kind of neat. Yeah, the floors in this thing are completely gone and that's one of the better ones there. You can see back there, the back floor is gone, gone. <laughs> and the trunk floor is gone, gone. There's an old 8-track. They must have put an 8-track in this at some point in time. There we go. I finally got all that wood out of the back of my truck. I can put my gloves back in here. Show you in here real quick. That guy's going to be here in just a minute on that Chevy. The guy on the International is about an hour out. But yeah, I got all this set up. I got the first two pipes put in. But to go through the ceiling, I need a double wall pipe. And I thought, rather than just, this here is kind of close to everything, you're supposed to have 18 inches of clearance. And that's not 18 inches of clearance. So I thought I would just go ahead and take this one back out and get a double wall that goes from here all the way up, clears the ceiling, and then it's fine outside. So to do that, I'm going to need about a four footer. And then there won't be any seams in it or nothing like that. That way it's just all one solid piece. That would be perfect if I could get that. I just haven't been able to get that yet. But I'll get it eventually. I'll get this going. By the time I get this going, I probably won't need heat anymore. I'll probably need air conditioning, but that's okay. I'll have it for next year. It's loaded. It did not want to cooperate. This tire here kept trying to flop it off this side of the trailer. <laughs> but it made it. So that's all that matters. Now it's got to make it down to Oklahoma. Once he gets it there, though, he can jack it up and put tires of hold air on it. That'll make it a whole lot easier to unload. There it goes. Headed to Oklahoma.
there we go all loaded up this one was the exact opposite of the Chevy the Chevy the front end kept wanting to walk over this one here the back end kept wanting to walk over but I scooted it over with the loader I was able to clear the fender once again he'll take it home put some tires on it and get it back off the trailer well that's a cool truck I really like that one well, we got him loaded up he's chained down he is headed out headed back up north so one truck went south one truck went north it was kind of funny the guy from down south when he got here he started putting jackets on or he didn't but his family did they all started putting jackets on and these people came from up north and when they got here they started taking jackets off and they were here at basically the same time so <laughs> just shows how much different things are to me this is warm weather this is the warmest it's been all week so this is nice but <laughs> Depending on where you're from, somewhere it's 20 degrees cooler and somewhere it's 20 degrees warmer. Just struck me as funny. All you people think I just crush everything. Now you know it's not true. I don't crush everything. I crush a lot, but not everything. Those there, I was definitely glad to find those new homes. I don't think I would have cut either one of those up anyway. They were both just too complete and original and not just rotted to nothing. I got all sorts of room in here again now. Now I can get some more cars and stack them in here and... Those calves there are sold. I wish that guy would come get those. I haven't seen them in a while. It'd be really cool if I could get those out of here. And this car here really should just be crushed, but I'd like to find a home for this interior. It all needs restored, but bucket seats and a console and a tilt column. Of course, the column's kind of messed up, but some of you might still want it, but no, I guess it's not a tilt, is it? Never mind. But still, the seats and center console, somebody ought to get those out of there. We'll get this car out of here and take that car there and go ahead and crush it. Now I've got this Chevy four-wheel drive one ton back here that I saved probably go ahead and take that out and crush it at these high prices Get those out of here the cab on the orange truck is sold I need to get that off the same guy bought it that bought those cabs So maybe I get that cab off there and he'll come down and get all those out of here I can get it out of here This truck runs and drives of course so does the orange one But I need to just go ahead and at least just chop the frame so I can get rid of the back half while prices are up Got a lot I really need to do and it's just it's nice out today and I should probably get some work done Plus, I really need to work in that building, get that set up, but you know what? I was just thinking, it is so nice out here right now. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful, so <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do any work. I think I'm going to go home and put on a shirt that's not quite so holy. This is my, my holy shirt. I don't want to wear my holy shirt out in public. I didn't realize this thing had that big of a hole. I need to throw this one away. But I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to run home, and I'm going to switch trucks, and I'm going to take off, and I'm going to go hiking out at the... I don't know if I'm going to go to the lake, or if I'm going to go to the river, or where I'm going to go, but... This is the first like really nice, feels like spring, and it actually is spring day. So that's what we're gonna do. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is just a quick run out here and do a few things. See a few old cars be rescued and find new homes so they don't have to be cut up or crushed or anything like that. Like I've said a million times, I, I really prefer when things are saved like that. I really don't like crushing the stuff, but I let the customer decide. And if the highest paying customer wants it cut up, then that's what happens. Just the unfortunate name of business. But if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Please remember to keep checking back. You just never know what's going to happen next. I've got some little bit different content coming up. It's not all going to be car related. I'm going to try to branch out a little bit and do a little bit more than just cars. And of course, I'll still be doing the cars. Don't worry. So keep checking back. You never know what's going to happen next. Anyway, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic, and I mean fantastic, rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.